Good morning, SCMC family. I'd like to welcome you this morning with this beautiful uh, wintry day. Uh, I also would like to welcome the people online, especially a big shout out to my family uh, from Gatineau, Quebec, that's been online for a few months. So, bonjour à tout le monde à Québec, mon cousin Roger. Je t'apprécie, on vous aime, puis on continue à, à se parler. Hey, thanks, Linda. Hey, can we all give uh, a really, really big bonjour on three? One, two, three. Bonjour. bonjour. <laughs> awesome. All right, let me invite you to stand with us as we read our call to worship today from Psalm 71 and uh, take some songs or take some time worshiping our Lord through song. So Psalm 71 says this, In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me not be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Let's praise him here together this morning. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty, for my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied. Within your presence, I sing beneath the shadow of your wings. Better is, better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere, than thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask and I would seek to see your beauty. To find you in the place your glory dwells. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts. 
reports and thousands elsewhere and thousands elsewhere Perfect in love, here you are, robed in majesty and light. Glory beyond earth and sky, who is like the Lord Most High. Great is the one who would lead a throne room for a cross all for love all glory to god all glory to god alone praise to the one who gave it all name above all names king jesus king jesus all glory to god alone praise to the one who holds the throne name above all names King Jesus, King Jesus. Imperfect lives at your feet, finding mercy in your eyes. How far from this place we would be, God, without your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Great is the grace that would reach across the great divide to bring us life. All glory to God alone, praise to the one who gave it all, name above all names, King Jesus, King Jesus, all glory to God alone. Praise to the one who holds the throne, name above all names, King Jesus, King Jesus. Shout it out. Shout on the earth. Shout like you know that our King is risen. Shout like you know the kingdom of heaven is here. Shout all you saints. Shout like you know that we're in his presence. Shout like you know the king is in residence here. Shout all the earth. Shout like you know that our king is risen. Shout like you know the kingdom of heaven is here. Shout all you saints. Shout like you know that we're in his presence. Shout like you know. The King is in residence here. All glory to God alone. Praise to the one who gave it all. Name above all names. King Jesus, King Jesus. All glory to God alone. Praise to the one who holds the throne. Name above all names. King Jesus. King Jesus, King Jesus, King Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Well, it's good to be together uh, here on this last Sunday of, uh, of January. Thanks so much for taking the time, setting aside some time. Uh, to invest in, deepen, and challenge your relationship with God. Uh, just a couple of things that I want to mention to you. Uh, one is uh, our annual reports have been made available this weekend, and for those of you who are here in person, uh, they, there are some paper copies available at each of the entrances on the tables there. Uh, they look like this. Uh, and, uh, and, so just, uh, w and also on the inside of the page, there's just some outline as to the process this year for our annual meeting. Again, this year it's going to be a, a, a hybrid process, and uh, and so 
um, just take note of, of all, the, all of that. And so we encourage you to read these, and if you have any questions, to submit them beforehand, and that makes the, that makes, uh, the meeting, uh, when we come to the meeting place and, and, uh, and then the voting process, so much more efficient. And so we're thankful for so much uh, that God has uh, continued to lead us and been faithfully providing for us uh, to demonstrate his goodness, his grace, and his truth uh, into our community over the course of 2021 and, and uh, as we now uh, point forward into, into this year. And so uh, take, take note of that. Um, also, I just want to say thanks to, I've tried, tried to do this uh, at, each, at each interval that this happens, uh, but we have had a number of students who have been part of our, our, um, our, our function over the last number of months. And uh, for the last four and a half months or so, we've had Ethan Thompson as a co-op student from his high school here with us every other week. And uh, he wrapped up his uh, time with us this week. And as you, you may not have even ventured into some of the hallways or rooms or uh, gym or, you know, he's probably touched every wall and room in this place uh, over the course of, uh, of these months and helped clean up a lot and paint and uh, set some things in order. And he finished up this week by helping Aaron Melville. And we want to thank uh, Aaron Melville as well. For those of you who hung up your coats today for the first time in a long time, Hopefully you did that with appreciation. Uh, Aaron Melville and, uh, and then uh, Ethan assisted him in putting up uh, new shelves and coat racks. And they look sharp, don't they? I think that's worthy of appreciation. Uh, so thankful to have Aaron's, uh, Aaron's uh, giftedness to be able to see how to do that well. I just said I have this idea and uh, I have no idea what it could look like. And he says, here's how it looks good. Your idea is good, but let me just do this. And, uh, and so his idea is so much better. And that's uh, that result. And did you know that the wood, so the wood that are on those shelves are from our pews. Did you know that? Uh, so that's, we have uh, repurposed the wood from our uh, pews, our, our, uh, our those coat racks. In fact, the wood uh, on this pulpit is from the pew as well. And, uh, and so I thank um, Barry Edwards and uh, Karen Allen and Paul Babcock, who lives just down the road, uh, for helping to uh, create a new pulpit. And that's been here for a few months. But that's really cool, right? And I uh, love, love that. There you go. So people using gifts, right, to, to bless our, our, our community, uh, to bless, bless us as a, as a church family. That's really awesome and appreciate that. Uh, today, I want to remind you, thank you for those of you who brought food items uh, into the building physically this morning with you. And uh, we do have a food drive. If you're watching online, you want to come by between 12 and 1, you can drop off other uh, non-perishable food items, and they will be given to uh, River City uh, Homeless Shelter for distribution there. And any uh, cash gifts, uh, e-transfers that are, co that are designated food drive, those will also be pooled together and given to uh, the renovation um, process at, uh, to expand uh, the River City Homeless Shelter as they're trying to create a homeless shelter for women. Uh, and so unfortunately, the need is great and growing in our community, and this is a means by which we can express that, uh, be part of something and, uh, that is uh, quite needy in our community. So uh, keep, that, keep that in mind as well. And I just want to take a few minutes for us to uh, pray together. I want to read a passage of Scripture. For some of you, it will be very familiar. And uh, you, may, um, uh, you may know that there are some things happening nationally this week and uh, centered uh, most uh, prolifically in Ottawa, but across the nation in many other cities. And uh, demonstrations, uh, mostly peaceful, which we're thankful for. Um, and, uh, and I thought I just want to, often people ask me what I think, but I'm not going to tell you that today. Um, but here's what, here's what I want you to think about. Uh, in all that, all that is done, whether wherever you stand on any of this stuff, here's the reality from, you want to hear what I think? I think I don't care. Uh, I don't care, uh, where you stand on any of it. I, I care about how you treat other people, uh, depending on where you stand. And that includes leadership, those who lead us, uh, and, uh, and that includes my friends. And, uh, and it's unfortunate to me 
the greatest thing that's unfortunate to me is the disdain and the division that with which people are treating others uh, because they don't share the same view. Our inability to express ourselves and hear the expression of others who might not agree with us and to be able to handle that in the ways that we are, uh, some of us, it's just... It makes me, my wife asked me, how do I feel about all this stuff? I said, it actually makes me sad. It makes me sad for our country. Um, and uh, and it, yet it's promoted as normal. Uh, let's point out and let's divide. And so I, 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 read, these, I read these words to you uh, because I think so many people think they know everything on these topics. And they refuse to listen to anything else. And yet the reminder is that we only know in part. And so to have some humility among us uh, about how we contend for different things. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these things, these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So, Father, as we uh, come before you, we gather together as a, uh, a church family. We gather in a community. We gather within a nation. And there's tension all around us, and maybe there's tension even within us. And so we pray, Father, that uh, you would continue to hold us and guide us, that you would bring to light those people who demonstrate your truth. Father, that you would expose falsehood and lies. And Father, that most of all, you would deepen our capacity to demonstrate love one to another. Father, forgive us for dishonoring those that you have placed in leadership over us. Forgive us for name-calling. Forgive us for hardness. Forgive us for anger. Forgive us for impatience. Father, we desire, we desire for healing, for physical healing for our people. We desire for healing for our land. But ultimately, Father, we desire for men and women and boys and girls to point towards Jesus, to look towards the establishment of fullness of his kingly rule. And would you use us, Father, to be ambassadors of his great love. And so we submit ourselves to your care, asking God that you would use us in that process. And that love, your love, would ring through our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. It's Kid Jam time. So many excited faces running out of the room. Yes, awesome. Everyone heard that, right? 
Elsie loves Kid Jam. Awesome. And for the rest of us, uh, let me just invite you to stand. We're going to continue singing some songs of worship to our King. Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Yes, 
I am. Free at last. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place. child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. we thank you. We thank you this morning for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy, that we are called your children. Lord, our spirits cry, Abba, Father, and we thank you for your goodness towards us. Lord, we just pray for Pastor Dave as he comes up this morning to share your truth through your word. We just pray that the spirit would move in this place to teach us and guide us and transform us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we'll be uh, headed to Colossians chapter 4 in a minute, so if you want to get that ready, and uh, just a couple of things as we, uh, as we read that, and then we'll pray together. I uh, just want to, uh, our, Ann Cotton's uh, back with us this morning, and Art is at home, uh, but they're at home, and been home for two weeks now, and uh, just, she's very thankful for uh, having Art back at home, um, and uh, he's going to c- continue to recover there, and thank you for your prayer and support to them. And as I mentioned that, uh, also to mention, um, some of you will know uh, Len and Lucille Cox, and uh, their son, uh, Lenny, um, passed away this past week, and uh, he was 58 years old, and uh, the the year is a visitation today at Smith's uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., and the funeral is tomorrow at 11. So your prayer uh, for them is uh, is greatly uh, appreciated as well. Um, Colossians chapter 4, in verse 2, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way that you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. And so, Father, as we come before you and come before your word, and uh, we come with uh, those circumstances of this past week, um, 
on us, and we come with uh, some, as we think forward into the days and the weeks ahead, uh, there, are, there are details that roll through our minds in all of that. And yet, uh, God, you have set aside some time to speak into our lives. And so we pray that your word would indeed come alive in our lives and find intersection in those circumstances in our lives, that we might yet learn to know how to honor you in, uh, in all those places that, you f- that we find ourselves. And so would you guide us according to your truth and by your spirit? Would your spirit teach us indeed? In Jesus' name, amen. You know, uh, this year is going to mark the 70th anniversary of our church family. 70 years is a long time by any measurement. Some of you will know this better than others. Just over 16 years ago, our church family went through a transition that allowed us to re-examine ourselves and our purpose and the means by which we accomplish that purpose. As a result, we developed a vision statement, which in its fullness reads as, as follows, to partner with God in developing genuine, fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And at that time, we also came up with four, a fourfold strategy that perhaps isn't quite as familiar. Loving seekers, inviting them to come and see Christ. Building believers, encouraging them to grow in Christ. Equipping workers releasing them to serve Christ and multiplying leaders, training them to lead like Christ. Those were, and they still are, really good statements. However, we wondered at the time about how transferable they could be. You see, words on a page don't provide the depth of meaning until they have some action behind them. There's often a discrepancy between what we read and how we go about it. And it became evident that we needed to figure out a way to communicate what we're about as the SEMC in a clear and concise manner. Well, we didn't have to wait too long. Actually, early in that first year, 16 years or so ago, Talford Street right here underwent a major construction. And our neighbors couldn't park their vehicles in their driveways for a great number of weeks, maybe even months. We sent them a message and we offered for them to park, use our parking lot at their convenience. And we took down signs that would communicate otherwise. Our outside space became their space. And then we started having conversations with organizations and came to understand that our facility could be a real gift to the needs of the people in our neighborhood. And so we started sharing that as well. Our inside space became their space as well. And through these interactions, the practical application of our strategy wasn't drawn up by a committee. It was given to us by these neighbors and organizations who thanked us repeatedly and in many ways for serving our community. Over these years, we have been learning to hold on to the sure foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ and commitment to God's truth, recognizing that we are partners with God in his kingdom work and we strive to take seriously the call to bring the evidence of the life of Jesus, his grace to those with whom we come in contact. Truth and grace, grace and truth. Jesus came with the fullness of both as he moved through his life and interacted with people. If Jesus is giving us that example, and if we desire to be his followers as his disciples, then it seems fitting that we should be growing in our understanding of bringing the fullness of grace and truth through our lives to those around us. Over these next few weeks, I want to bring a refresher on what it means to be part of the SEMC family. For some, it will be a reminder, and perhaps it will bring back some memories of how we've seen God transform and transition us over these years. For others, it will hopefully help you to further understand what it means to be part of the kingdom contribution that the SEMC is making together with many other churches uh, for God's kingdom work here in this community and around the world. 
My hope is that some will be re-energized in their commitment to live out their faith for Jesus in everyday spaces. It will also be that some may be challenged to take another step of obedience or be led to confession of sin, allowing the Spirit of God to continue to work in your life. And still others may say, hey, hey, you know, I'd like to formally identify with the SEMC as an active member. So let me say this. I've got a great love for this church family. I have a greater love for Jesus, and I trust and believe in how he has purposed us in this location for all these years. This church was founded on a compassionate belief that children and families transformed by Jesus could influence the neighborhood and the city for the kingdom of God. And while the means by which, this, by which we fulfill these purposes may change, the path of our origin story continues to inform the present course of action. And may God use it to lead us into the future as well. We partner with God, and we serve our community. They go together. And as many of you are now familiar, we have begun over the last couple of years to use the acronym SPRING, to provide some detail for our, strat our strategy. Spring. Serve, pray, respond in grace. Say that with me. Ready? Serve, pray, respond in grace. You see, at the SEMC, it's always spring, even when it's really cold day after day, night after night. As we go through this mini-series then, I am going to strive to merge all of this together. One of my goals for this year is to develop a discipleship path, a based on what God has been teaching us over the years. This will be valuable for us to be able to pass on to others who will also then pass it on to others so that there may be more generations of people who find themselves in right relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ and are growing in their development as genuine, fully devoted followers of Jesus. Colossians chapter 4 and the verses that I just read speak into this very significantly. These words come after Paul has focused our attention on who Jesus is and reminded us of our responsibilities to one another in various contexts and relationships. You can look back at that. And if we're going to be fully devoted, if we're going to be genuine followers of Jesus Christ, then a good question to ask is, how will we be devoted? The short answer is communication with God, or prayer. Prayer encompasses a whole lot more than we can certainly cover today, but at its core, prayer is the means by which we listen to God's truth and then speak to Him about it. Whether that's for those we care about, whether that's for stuff that's happening in our world, or for ourselves. The Apostle Paul reminds us that we are to be devoted to prayer, that we are to be committed to communicating with God. Devotion speaks to priority, that is, what we value more than when compared to other things. Devotion also speaks to consistency, that which we do on a regular basis. It's the example given to us by Daniel in the Old Testament. We, we learn from him that he regularly set aside three times a day where he would privately be communicating with God. And that didn't change. And in fact, that devotion helped him in, to deal with difficult circumstances with a firm conviction that God was still in control even when his job and then his life were put in jeopardy. Commitment and consistency are important aspects of being devoted to in prayer. In this closing section of the letter to the believers in Colossae, Paul is reminding them that prayer, prayer must also be watchful and thankful. We need to be aware of and ready for prayer, and we need to be quick to demonstrate and verbalize gratitude. As some of you may know, I've been reading through the book of Luke in my regular devotions, listening to and observing the life of Jesus. There have been some things that have caught my attention uh, in new ways. Has that ever happened to you as you read back over some things that you've read previously? It's pretty cool when that happens, doesn't it? 
At the end of Luke 12, Jesus gives everyone a reminder about being watchful in their times, to learn how to observe and interpret the times. You see, we have a tendency to be impulsive in our times, right? We gravitate to whatever cause is highlighted in the hopes of creating a better us, a better community, a better climate, a better world. And so we rush to judgment, we accuse, and we divide people on one side, and then we elevate and celebrate people on another side until, until the next issue comes along. And then... And so Jesus understood that about people then, and he understands that that's true now. But then we come to the beginning of Luke chapter 13, after Jesus has talked about being watchful, and the, and the people show Jesus a, a newspaper, or they read to him from their, their social media news feed, and they say, hey, hey, Jesus, did you, did you hear about this? Hey, Jesus, did you, did you, did you watch this video? They say, who's to blame, Jesus? Maybe the victims are to blame. But Jesus doesn't take the bait. Instead, he points to an alternative way, God's way, a way that can only be discerned through the watchfulness of prayer, which stabilizes us in a world of confusion to trust that God will continue to be faithful to what he has promised. Let's actually read about it together. If you have your Bible, your Bible app still open, then Go to Luke chapter 13, the beginning of the chapter. It says, Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. The watchfulness of prayer should lead us away from pronouncing judgments on the people or the circumstances of this world. Watchfulness is the capacity to see through the circumstances and into the heart of God for people, knowing that God values every human life and wants everyone to confess or declare their faith in Jesus. When we allow ourselves to be divided by the circumstances of the day, which are trivial in light of eternity, then we allow ourselves to be distracted from God's kingdom desire for the people among whom he has placed us. For those of us who have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, we understand, or ought to understand, that the consequences of evil will increasingly continue to make the world a difficult place for all people to live. And we know that Jesus is ready to return to begin to remake the world as it was intended to be and as you and I desire it to be. And therefore, we must be watchful through the circumstances of the world to point to the greater hope that we have in Christ. And the evidence of this will not be our jumping to judgment, finger pointing or increasing division. The evidence of this will be on our patient perseverance in helping others discover the life that Jesus offers and being compassionate representatives of God's justice towards all. How do we know this? What should we do instead? That's a great question. Thanks so much for asking. In fact, if you still have your Bibles open to uh, Luke 13, then let's keep reading, right? Starting, picking back up in verse 6, because Jesus has something else that he wants to say to us. So following this, he says, Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it be? Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, cut it down. You know, these are the days or maybe the years where we can grow tired of 
observing the unresponsive lives of others. We may be tempted to give up or abandon them. But what if we instead became devoted to prayer, watchful, thankful? What if we had someone committed to praying the ground-loosening, ground-fertilizing kind of prayers while we tended and cared the soil around somebody's life? Who are the seekers? They are those who have never heard of the grace of God, the redemption of Christ, and the free gift of salvation that he offers. They are those who have never found their freedom to live through confession of sin with a holy and a right relationship with a holy and just God. They are those who have never known the total forgiveness of sin and evil that he offers through the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. Who are the seekers? They are those who have become disenchanted with church because of the emptiness of rigid ritual expectations. Or they are skeptical as a result of all kinds of abuses, whether they are sexual abuses, scandals, and moral failures of leaders. And frankly, who could blame them? Seekers are those who have a hunger for the spiritual. In an age of spirituality, they have a sense of a greater power, of a greater being, and they need someone who will point them to Jesus. Seekers are those who find a label with which to identify in the hopes of finding a community of people who will accept them first for who they are presently. Seekers are those who have at one time professed a faith in Christ but fail to recognize his ongoing transforming power. They have hidden or cloaked their sin. They falsely believe that perhaps their opportunity for forgiveness and repentance has been taken away. They are those who believe that they have no kingdom value, that they have nothing to offer in service to the Lord. Their gifts and abilities lie dormant, stagnant, or atrophied, unused, and therefore they fail to experience the overfilling joy that Christ promises throughout all phases of life. There are those who have experienced hurt and loss, disappointment in this life, and confuse that with the absence of God rather than recognizing as, the, as God is the one who carries them through the difficulties. Seekers are those on the margins, the poor, the lonely, the abandoned, the unpopular, the ridiculed, the unfashionable, those unable to hear, those unable to be heard, but with inner longings that can only be satisfied from the God who actually hears them. Seekers, they're all around us. They're family members, they're schoolmates, they're neighbors, they're co-workers, they're teammates. They're the people who think like us. They're the people who think differently than us. It's not so much that people aren't seeking what God has to offer. They are. They just aren't coming to places like this to understand what it means to know and be loved by a God and to be invited into a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. But they will observe you. They will want someone to listen to their story, to help them dig up the hard, long-neglected places in their lives. And as they do, God then creates space within them to understand his truth and his grace. The reminder from the Apostle Paul is that we must continue to talk about, point toward, declare, proclaim the kingdom of God, even if our circumstances are unfavorable or we have been treated unjustly. Remember, Paul is writing these words from prison. He says, I'm in chains while I do this. And there is no hatred, there's no judgment, there's no blame or rationalization in his tone. Instead, it's his devotion to prayer. He is watchful, he is thankful, and he's always looking up for opportunities to share about Jesus because he knows that all around him are people who are seeking more from this life than what is being offered Therefore, may we be wise in our actions. May we learn to speak with grace. May we be the ones who observe the good in people and commend them in it. May our encouragement add value to that which God is already doing in their lives. And so we will be like salt to them. 
May we have the humility to know the difference between feeling like we need to have an answer and knowing how to answer. Humility is key if we're going to serve God and the people he loves. Humility, despite our own difficult circumstances, allows us to pray for the activity of God, to break up the hardness around the lives of others. It's something we can offer one to another. Humility says, I'm willing to do the dirty work, to respond with grace, to speak with patience and encouragement. Why? Because there are people who are seeking God, and there are people whom he is seeking. You know, in Isaiah 58, verses 6 to 9, in response to those who call for him, God says that he is close to He's close to them. He's listening, and he is present. He says, is this not the kind of fasting that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke and set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? And when you see the naked, to clothe them and to not turn away from your own flesh and blood. And then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing, your healing will quickly appear. And then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear God, your rear guard. And then you will call and the Lord will answer and you will cry for help and he will say, here I am. He will say, here am I. Here am I. And that promise should encourage us to enter into the difficult disparities that we see in our world, knowing that God is there. And more than that, more than that, the second is if you, flip, if you, if you were there, just to go to Isaiah 65 and just in verse 1, where God, says, where God says that even those who attempt to live as though he did not, does not exist, and that he, and they will pretend that they have no need of him, he is calling them as well and revealing himself to them also. That is crazy, right? It says, he says this, he says, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To the nation that did not call on my name, I said, you ready? Here am I. Here am I. How amazing is that? To think that God is revealing himself to those who are seeking him and even to those who are attempting to create identities apart from him. So whatever we think a church should look like, the reminder for us is this, that God, this is what God says a church family should look like. There are people who are seeking him and there are people who, whom he is seeking. And when we align ourselves with this, when we devote ourselves to this, then we begin to understand the mystery of Christ that builds contentment and brings gratitude no matter the circumstances that we face. Let's pray together. So, Father, as we come, uh, as we listen to your words, it meets us in different places. But perhaps as we gather together, there are those that you have placed in our hearts, people that we know are broken or angry or hurt, been hurt by church, been hurt by life. They seem hard. They seem unproductive. And so would you forgive us for neglect? Would you forgive us for judgment? But Father, would you, as you bring those names to mind, would you deepen our devotion to bringing them before you? Father, would you break up the hard ground in our life? Would you break up the hard ground around those who seem unresponsive, Thank you that your love for us is greater. Thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Forgive us and yet use us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, let me invite you to stay with us once again as we close out our service singing the song Death Was Arrested. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. And my orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace, so free. Washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new now. Life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new displayed on a criminal's cross. The darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. is over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever. We're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began. good reminder of the difference that Christ has makes in our life, right? And so as we go, uh, let me send you off with this uh, benediction, benediction. And if you're here locally and you're watching online, you want to come and drop off uh, non-perishable food items, 
and we'll be here from 12 to 1. Just stop under the um, overhang at the main doors. Come in off of East Street. That would be awesome. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. And all God's people said, amen. 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 I heard that. Have a wonderful week. Keep well. Wash your hands. And let's go make a kingdom difference.